back to Real Talk. It's round two, episode two. Well, actually episode 15, but this is Raw and Relevant Conversations and we love talking to a variety of guests. Thanks so much for the feedback on the first episode with Millie Boyle. It seemed like it was a bit of a fan favourite. Keep the likes, the follows and the ratings, all that. Keep that one coming because we absolutely love it. Our uh, One of our little guests is getting a little distracted and we'll get straight into it because this woman is a wonder woman. She's all, a cookie monster as well. <laughs> <laughs> Played for Australia. She's one of the Firebirds favourites. And I'm going to make sure I get this pronunciation right. But Gretel Buter. Did Perfect. I, did I get it? <laughs> Close enough. <Gah>! Yeah. <laughs> Buetta. Yes. 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 <laughs> what ones have you had? What pronunciations? Oh, I think, um, yeah, Buter is pretty popular or Buetta or... Boo Etta or yeah, anything goes really, honestly. I asked um, Nico's dad how to pronounce it and he gave me three different variations. <laughs> I was like, well, okay, we'll just go with it. That makes it really hey, tricky geez. for us. But I think Bobby's getting upset because we didn't, in- we didn't actually introduce Bobby. <laughs> the main character, Bobby, how are you? <laughs> no, <Nah>, distracted now. <laughs> Uh, we'd love to start this podcast by just saying this is raw and relevant. So you've got to make sure that whatever you say is going to be raw and real. And I'm Perfect. sure that um, you can abide by those rules. Yes, definitely. I love it. Oh, he's going to go for a play now. Yeah. Okay. We'll distract him. We'll be really quick, Bobby, um, <laughs> to kick it off, just fast five. So we like to get it rolling, so, some icebreakers, but I guess most annoying teammate in the Firebirds. Oh. <laughs> Oh, this one's easy. It's Lara Dunkley. She's one of my closest friends, but um, <laughs> she's the team pest. Um, she just plays personal jokes on everyone and anyone. No one's safe. And um, the other day, um, she hid someone's keys so they couldn't leave. Oh! So <laughs> she's wild, but we love her. Yeah, terrible. <laughs> I love it. We all need one of them. Our first kiss. Where was your first, first kiss? First kiss. I think it was in Brody on the Gold Coast. Um, <laughs> I was very. I was. About 15 and I think one of my friends was like, just do it. Just hurry up. So it wasn't very romantic, but um, got it out of the way. (laughs) (laughs) Never how you imagine. It's never like the movies. Um, Favourite band? Favourite band. Oh, I'm I'm shocking. I'm a um, just like hottest hits on my Spotify account. Um, So favourite band? Uh... Yeah. Is it, Destiny's is it, Child. Oh, Destiny's, Destiny's Child. Child. Old school. That's my go-to. Okay. Cheat meal? Cheat meal, pizza for sure. Oh, which, which type? Oh, anything. Um, Hawaiian. With pineapple? Yes, and a <gasps> thick crust. Has to be oh. thick crust. Okay. I love pineapple. I'm not sure about the thick crust. Um, <laughs> the last one, party trick. Oh, party trick. Um, I love... Um, Oh, I don't know if it's a party trick, but I just throw like um, blueberries or grapes up in the air and catch them in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> At training or lollies or whatever. <laughs> I love it. Great hand eye coordination. <laughs> I get really into it. Oh my God, I'm going to make sure next time we're at a party, get out the blueberries. Yes! <laughs> Bobby's like, what Such are a you mom. two Such talking a about? Boring. <laughs> oh dear. All right. Before we kick things off, we do like to ask one word that best describes you. So what is that word that you think best describes oh, yourself? I think bubbly on a good day. No. <laughs> <laughs> bubbly after Bobby's had a great sleep, but no, I like to um, be pretty up and about and to have a good time. And if I'm enjoying something and loving it, then I usually, oh, <laughs> he's going to try and ruin your yeah, bubbly I mood, know. Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're supposed to be bubbly, but yeah, um, most of the time. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I feel like it suits you. You're very warm. You came Aww. in here and you just brought up an office here. It's fantastic. <laughs> the studio. Um, now, Diamonds number 165. Um, you made your debut. Was it back in 2015? Yes. Yeah, I think it was in October. Crazy. Yep. I know. To think how far you've come. And I think uh, just, I guess, in the press and most recently, You've got your little one here and we're going to talk about Bobby quite a bit, but coming back from having a baby and just over at the quad series, you beat the roses, you got player of the match and player of the series. And for me and a lot of people, we saw Nico, your husband on the sideline, holding your baby Bobby and the roles had reversed. 
You were yeah. out there being Wonder Woman. Was that? Have you had time to reflect on that moment? Yeah, I think it was. It was yeah, it was pretty special. Now looking back, um, I think in the moment you just, you just, um, well, before we had Bobby, we had a chat and we said, if like we come, if I come back to netball, if, if I'm going to try, um, we're going to do it together and as a family. And so that was the pact we kind of made. And um, it's actually been really nice, like traveling together. I think at the start of tour, all the girls um, were saying, oh, you're so lucky you get to bring your family with you. And I never thought of it that way, but it's been, that was really special um, having them on tour. And we stayed in a re- really bougie place, which doesn't usually happen. So I thought, I think Nico <laughs> got um, the lucky, lucky end of the stick I was like this doesn't usually happen like <laughs> but um no I was I felt very blessed to have um him come and support me and um yeah to have Bobby there was was really special yeah, he made he made headlines he's certainly always good at making himself center of attention which we love yeah it takes after his dad <laughs> <laughs> and did you think like did you think that you'd actually come back yeah, I wasn't sure. So I didn't want to put that pressure on myself when I was pregnant. I said, oh, I'd love to um, come back. But I also was like, look, I would love to start a family. I feel content. I feel if this is my last game of netball, that's okay. So that's, I had to, you know, come to terms with it, it could be my last game and I'm, I'm ready to start a family. And um, I just, the support I received, like when I was pregnant with Bobby, they kept me within the Australian squad and the Australian coach, ah. Stacey, she was just a new mum herself. So I found, um, a lot of confidence from that. Um, and then just watching Laura Geitz come back after Barney and Amelia Ann Echinasio, she's the Silver Ferns captain wow. for, um, wow. yeah, New Zealand and seeing her come back. Um, there's a lot of amazing, incredible, um, women out there. And I, I even looked at other sports like Alex Morgan. She played her first game, um, in soccer four months after having her little girl. And, um, I knew four months was going to be roughly around my timeline as well. So that was really, gave me a lot of confidence seeing that. And, and Candace Parker as well, the way she came back, um, she had her, um, daughter when she was about 22, 23. So she was a young mum, and she came back fighting fit. So there's so many incredible role models around, around and out there for me. Um, hopefully there's more and more these days, but, um, that gave me a lot of comfort. Yeah, for sure. I felt like you've labelled so many of the good ones too, which is so great. <laughs> Did you reach out to anyone to uh, ask for some help? Or Yeah, I kind of, um, probably Laura Geitz was like my, my main mentor and she's a really good friend of mine. So that was, um, that gave me a lot of comfort. And I think um, our Firebirds coach, Megs, she um, had twins. Um, they're around five or six years old and... Um, she was like, yeah, I reckon you can do it. And when people put that belief in me, um, I got a lot of confidence, yeah, from that when people believe in you mm. and say you can do it. So, um, yeah, just I didn't really put any pressure on myself, but I knew I wanted to be back for round one if my body and Bobby allowed it. So yeah. um, I was very lucky. I don't want to break any of your stuff. I was very lucky. He's a... Uh, um, he was a good sleeper um, from the get-go. So as long as his belly was full, typical boy, yep. <laughs> full belly. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Um, he was, yeah, usually a good sleeper. So that helped. Um, and then, yeah, I just, they had a 10-week program for me to get back. And I um, I was like, they're like, do you want it? Do you want it? And I'm one of those people that like, I'll, it's in your hands. I just got to get myself to training, get there and then do the work and then go home and be a mum. And as long as I showed up every day and got it done, um, I knew I was one step, step closer every time after every session. So that was, that was good. <laughs> it was so great. It was unreal to see you come back. And I know that there are other women who are doing it. I think it's, um, it's just really comforting to see that the tides are turning and it's becoming more and more common and you're somebody who's making it more realistic for other women to follow suit. Do you feel that? Yeah, I, I hope so. I hope, um, yeah, that's the case because that would definitely, that would bring me so much joy and um, I'd love, I'd love that because uh, 
Yeah, yeah there's, and you just don't know too. Everything's got to go. <laughs> Do you want the phone? Uh, thank you. I didn't <laughs> find out. So um, I should play the Wiggles. It's his favourite. Um, but yeah, there's you, you got to be yeah. Um, you got to have I suppose the right support around you. That's probably huge. Mm. Um, and you you don't realise how like everyone says the typical it takes a village to raise your family, but it actually does. <laughs> Which is what I've worked out, but if you've got that, you're you're miles ahead. So that that helps a lot. <laughs> yeah. So now, do you think too far forward? You said you know you want to have a family and you're content with where you're at. So do you you're still signed for another couple of seasons? Is it something where you can you know have another baby and then come back again, or what? Do, what do you do? Yeah, I know, I know right? <laughs> um, yeah, I think the goal for this year is just to play the best season I possibly can for the Firebirds um, and yeah I think um, we've been working really hard as a group and then um, Com Games if I'm lucky enough to get selected I'd love to to head over there and, and play with the Diamonds so that would be another goal of mine um, yeah and I, I know last time the Diamonds played at Commonwealth Games on the Gold Coast they lost to England by a point so it'd be awesome to be part of that um, that team and, and help bring the gold medal back home. <laughs> well, in the form you're in, I can't see you losing <laughs> it. I know some of the greats have been like, just give her whatever bib she wants. <laughs> and that's such a compliment. I need, to, um, I need to rewind. I need to take you back to when you were playing basketball and what was the drive to come over to netball? Sorry, I should explain. For our fans who um, are listening and don't know that you played basketball, you're very talented, then you came over and you just – blew everybody off the park with this layup, this famous layup. You Google Gretel Tippett and it's like reels of layup. But, but what was that, the turning point for you? Yeah, I think um, when I was 14, I think I made my first uh, Oz squad um, and I was just loving basketball and I did lots of um, overseas tours um, to France and Italy and I went to three Junior World Championships, thank you, <laughs> to Thailand and south of France and Chile. So there was so much travel. I remember speaking to my school friends. I'm still lucky to be in touch with her, with the same group. And they were like, Gretel, you weren't at school for year 10, 11 and 12. You were just traveling, <laughs> you were playing your basketball. And then in year 12, I actually lived at the Australian Institute of Sport for basketball with the likes of Verity Simmons and April Branley and Steph Wood. They were all in the net. They were all the netball girls and I was the basketball girl. So we didn't really actually talk, which is <laughs> funny now. But, um, yeah, and I actually had one of the girls who I lived with at the Institute. She reached out, Kali Mijovic. Um, she plays WNBL and she just had a little boy and he's four months old and she's done an amazing job and got herself back to, to join um, the Boomers for the um, rest of the WNBL season. So... That was amazing seeing her achieve that. But yeah, it just feels like a lifetime ago when I played and I loved it. I just knew I didn't want to go to college. I didn't, I'm too much of a homebody and I told mum it's her fault. She looked after us too well. <laughs> <laughs> and then I didn't aspire to be an Opal. So I was like, well, what, why am I playing? You know? And so I just took a break. Um, I had glandular fever, which forced me to take a break. And then I just took up, um, three months later, I just did full-time uni and I took up social netball because I missed team sport. And, um, the next day I got a phone call from the state league, the Jags, where oh, you played yeah. as well. And one of the teammates, one of the players, um, she fell pregnant. So that was an opening in shooter. And the coach was like, oh, do you want to come along to training? We just had an opening in our team. And I was like, you know what? I went along to um, social tryouts and I didn't even make the district team. So I'm not sure why you want me, but <laughs> I'll give it a crack. And yeah, it was kind of went from there. Paula Stewart, she's still coaching state league and she yes. showed a lot of faith in me. Yeah. Wow. Paula, Blast from the past. Out. Yeah. Legend. Honestly, she was, um, she was awesome. Very patient with me, with my stepping and <laughs> all those skills. Yeah. So, yeah, well, she's got great. a bloody good eye, doesn't she? Because <laughs> it worked out well. <laughs> she, well yeah. And then she obviously embraced the layup too, because we need to talk about that. You, <laughs> you really changed the game in, in the sense that nobody could work out how you were doing it and no one can stop you still to this day. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, you're too nice. I don't know. I, I feel like, yeah, I, it was pretty crazy because honestly, I was just doing it to get the ball in the hoop because I was like, I'm uncomfortable shooting this long shot, but I know how to do a layup. I've been doing it my whole life. I would rather do this because I know it's going to go in. So I'll just find any way I possibly could to do the layup because I knew nine times out of ten it was going in. So that was just how I, you know, like managed to hold my own out there. And then, yeah, it was crazy the, um, the yeah, the, I suppose. Hype. The hype around it was, was insane. So that was, that was really cool that people were embracing it. And I love seeing now athletes like Joe Harden and Sam Wallace, um, obviously coming from a basketball background themselves too. It's awesome to see everyone get it. Yeah. Doing a layup whenever they can. And, um, yeah, I get super excited. I remember, I think I was trying to get Cara Conan. She's my, she's my next uh, <laughs> target. Yes. She's, she's good at it too. She's just a bit shy. So hopefully she does one this season. Oh, <laughs> I watch this face. Yeah. She is certainly the talent too, which yeah. is really cool. Yep. It's, um, it's great to see the game changing. When I, I Google uh, Gretel, you, it still comes up as Tippett. That is your, yeah. your former last name. Um, and layup comes along with the lines of controversial, <laughs> um, polarizing, you know, because the netball's been so stuck in its True. ways, and yeah. even bringing in the extra point, you know, and the, the two goals, like, oh my gosh. But um, do you feel like it, it was something that needed to happen? If you can talk about it without it sort of being you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it was probably going to happen one way or, an, or another, and it probably people probably did it before me just probably maybe not as often or didn't realize they were doing a layup they're probably just off balance and shooting you know what I mean <laughs> maybe but oh, um, no, they definitely <laughs> didn't do it as good as you. <laughs> but um yeah it's funny because uh we train with the bullets now and they're like oh you, I like you obviously play basketball you do layups and they just think they think it's funny too because layup you just like it's like um passing in in basketball it's yeah. like one of the first fundamental skills that you learn and you just get it drilled into you so um yeah I um I think it um it was funny just like the way that the umpires would you weren't sure how they were going to umpire it when you first started doing it or you weren't sure how defenders were going to defend it either because they were, oh, sorry, because they were, um, (laughs) some would like move in with you and then like kind of like a basketball defense and others would, yeah, it was funny. It was really funny. Stand 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 in the way. Yeah. So yeah, I kind of had to work out, okay, now they like cottoning on to how to defend it and the umpires, you don't know if they're going to call contact on me because I'm going into them or contact on the defenders. So um, you just got to pick your times now. People are more onto it. But no, I I love it. Um, And I love, yeah, that the netball world's embraced it. Oh yes, Bobby. Sorry. That's okay. This is what this is just well. part of it. Bobby is uh, <laughs> for those listening, embracing the microphone and he said to oh Mum he wants to chat. I think we're still sweet. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Is it just a bit loose? Yes. Uh, big feet. Strong in. already. Oh. Wow. Because Bobby's one. Just over one. Yes. Yeah. Yep. January twenty twenty one. Yes. For everybody listening. Yep, so corn, baby. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> We uh, oh. we just went oh. for a quick intermission there. As, uh, <laughs> yeah. Bobby Bobby just needed some attention and he needed a microphone, so we've sorted him out now. Ooh. He can join in on the conversation, Ooh. can't you, Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> um, coming from a incredibly talented sporting family, I should add as well, Joel and Kurt, both pretty decorated, um, particularly Kurt with the AFL background, but you seem to be stealing all the headlines now. Have they <sighs> been really supportive in your quest to come back from pregnancy as well? Yeah, yeah, they have. Um, obviously, having children of their own, it's been awesome to catch up and Kurt came along to my first game and Joel watches every game. He's oh. um, the best. He gets up early for the, even being a dad of Twins, oh my gosh. <laughs> Being a dad of twins, he um yeah, he he um doesn't get much sleep, but he got up for all the England games, which was really special and yeah, it's just been I've always they've always been my idols growing up, so to have their support has just been 
yeah, huge. So, um, yeah, I just love them. And they live within, I think, 500 metres of each other now down on the Gold Coast. And mum and dad are like <laughs> a kilometre from that. So everyone's down there um, so close to home. So, um, yeah, I think we'll eventually end up down there too. And, and hopefully all the kids grow up seeing each other a lot. <laughs> are you based in Brizzy at the moment? Based in Brizzy, yes, at yeah. the moment. Love it up here. Been up here since I signed in 2015. So it's been great. Um but yeah, it's um, families down there too. So I get both, best of both worlds, I think. And what about having um, Kimmy back up for the fire? The how good's that? I was only talking to you off air about following you both um, on Instagram, <laughs> yeah. social media when uh, you both used to do the fitness site. Yes. Yeah, no, it's been awesome. Kimmy's um, come in and made herself at home. She's, um, uh, yeah, you can tell she's absolutely flourishes in the purple dress. Mm. Um, so it's been awesome having her back. Um, I've loved it. I think some sometimes before um, a game, I remember us both crying, hugging each other in the um, in the change room. Georgie didn't sleep a wink of, didn't have a wink of sleep before the game and Bobby was teething and we're just like what (laughs) how are we gonna get through but um but no we we did it so it's yeah it's really comforting knowing that um we understand each other we've both got young kids and um yeah she's just the way she's juggling everything is incredible so it's been awesome having her up you're the same. I'm just, I'm actually just giggling, trying to stay serious. It's how good you are at multitasking. <laughs> this is just the best. I mean, this is, this is oh. what it is. And I bet you there are mums listening in the car right now going, <laughs> I feel you, Gretel. I don't know how you're doing this. <laughs> oh, you've got Bobby at his best. He hasn't had his Arvo sleep and he's just hanging in. But, oh. um. It's sorry. great to see. Don't sorry. be sorry at all. <laughs> we'll wrap things up. I probably just wanted to ask for, you know, the other people who um, are thinking of having a family or um, maybe there's aspiring young netballers or sports people. What's your best advice to give to them? Yeah, I think honestly, don't, yeah, don't put off hold, having a family um, if you're worried about your, your career because honestly, the way it's been embraced, especially with netball, I, I don't know. In, many other sports but I feel like the tides are change times are changing and um you can do it you can do it and if yeah it's no it can be a choice now it can't uh, before um like if you can't see it you can't do it so I saw Laura Geitz do it and then I I knew I, that like I, it was possible. So the more people that you can see doing it, the more confidence you get. And um, it's hard. It's obviously hard. One one of the hardest things ever is having having a young family, but it's the most rewarding thing you'll ever do in your life. And it's, um yeah, he's just our world. And going to work, you have a new perspective on, on netball. It used to be my everything, but now it's just what I do, what I love. I'm so, I feel so blessed to do it, but I've got my family back home too, um, as well. So yeah, I think, yeah, honestly go for it. If, if you're contemplating it and if you think you can't do it, don't let that be, don't let that stop you. Cause you definitely can. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I think that's beautiful. And I think by the sounds of it, Firebirds have been so embracing, um, of, the three mums in the team, which is so great to see as well. Yeah, no, definitely. They've been unreal. Netball Australia and Netball Queensland, yeah, have really embraced, yeah, motherhood, especially having three of of us in one team. So, and the coaches, I think between, just between the three coaches, I think there's like eight children. So Katie's got four and Claire and Megs have two each. So um, yeah, it's definitely, I think that the kids might outnumber us when we all get together <laughs> for catch-ups. Ah, uh, there's a netball team. Yeah. There's a mixed netball team. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Daycare so for sure. Yeah. Oh, great. I appreciate you coming on. And Bobby, you've been a treat, mate. Oh. I know you're getting fidgety, <laughs> but you've been so good to us. You are uh, so super good. netball. It starts 27th of March for you. <laughs> Um, I've got it down. Yeah, 27. You're playing the Vixens at Nissan Arena, so we'll make sure we get around it and get yes, to it for sure. Yes, I'll have to get you tickets. Yes. You probably already got tickets. Two o'clock on the Sunday. <laughs> yeah, but uh, to everybody listening, this is Gretel. I've got to say it. Bieta. <laughs> Damn it. Bueta. <laughs> Gretel. Perfect. Bueta. Yes. That was it. Bueta. Bueta. Yeah. There we go. Gretel Bueta with Bobby. And make sure you like, subscribe. We'll be back again next Tuesday. Bye-bye.